Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to especially welcome you to this prayer meeting today. It's a prophetic meeting. And I rejoice with you that you are here with us in this service today. God by himself will meet your need as we pray together. And hear his prophetic words. I know this is appointed time with God. Wherever you are, I want you to know God is about to move you forward in your life. No matter the situation you have, no matter what you are facing or what is facing you, God is about to do new things in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Our Father, our God, we thank you and we bless you for this opportunity to be in your presence. Thank you because your presence is here. Lord, there is no doubt that as we pray here today, hearing your words, you are going to speak to us words of hope, words of faith, words of power, words of healing, words of breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy, for your loving kindness, for bringing us to this place today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Once again, you are welcome in Jesus' name. I want her to sing this chorus, then we'll go to the business of the day. Oh God, arise, and he's sending me this cutter. Oh God, arise, and he's sending me this cutter. Let God arise. And his enemies be scattered. O oh God, let God arise. Open your mouth and let us bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us worship him. He is worthy to be worshipped. He is worthy to be worshipped. He kalabu seke pashan talaba. Thank you, most righteous God. We give you praise, we give you glory. Ma seke pashan talabu. Lizege de balaburu kuti santalaburu bubu. Thank you, most righteous God. We give you praise, we give you glory. Ma seke pashan talaburu bubu libaba. Rabu seke pashan talaburu bubu libaba. Thank you, most righteous God. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be honored. You are worthy to be worshipped. In our lives, I mean every area of our life, you are worthy to be worshipped. Receive your glory. Receive your honor. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take your Bible right now and let us read a place. You know, for some time, God has been telling, you, telling us there is nothing like impossibilities in our lives. There is nothing like impossibilities in our lives. How can we be serving the God who can do all things? How can we be serving the God that the Bible said with him, all things are possible. And there are things that are impossible. Which is a lie from the pit of hell. So today we continue in our series. Last time we met here, we discovered that God has given us a place. Has given us a place. You see, some people say, oh, I cannot live in this place. I cannot live in that place. Who told you that? Let us not make the mistake of a man called Isaac. Isaac said, no, I cannot stay in this land. I want to go to another place. God came down and said, no, sit down in this land. I will bless you in it. I don't care the land you are today. I don't care the nation you are today. I don't care the name of that country you are today. I want you to know that is the land, that is the country, the nation God will want you to possess 
as far you have laid your feet in that place, you have walked upon that land, possess it, I say possess it in the name of Jesus Christ. Possess it. It then came in the land of Babylon. As was at that, the people of Israel were threatening to leave the land. God came down and told them, look, I want you to stay in this land. I want you to marry in this land. I want you to build your house, houses in this land. Do anything you want to do in this land. Let me tell you, that land you are, you will build your houses. You will marry there. You will have children. Because that is the land God has blessed you with. I don't know of yesterday. I don't know of tomorrow. But for today, the land that you are in right now is your land. That office that you are occupying today, don't be intimidated out. It's your office and I want you to occupy it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I prophesy that you stay where you are today. In that your marriage life, let me tell you, there is nothing like impossibility there. There is nothing like impossibility here. I want you to know that marriage life, that marriage home, is made for you. Don't be intimidated out. Don't be driven out. You have the authority. You have the power to live in that, that place, that marriage, that land, that nation, that country, that company that God has given to you, that office God has given to you. Don't be intimidated that it is your own. It is your own. That is why you are there in the first instant. That's why you are there. Don't say, oh, I cannot do this. I, you can do all things through Christ who threatens, who is threatening you. Threatening you. It's God that is threatening you. Giving you power to occupy where he has given you to be. Now, we are talking about a place. There is no place you cannot live. There is no place you cannot live as far as this earth is concerned, as far God is concerned in your life, as far Jesus is concerned in your life, as far as the Holy Ghost is concerned in your life. There is no place you cannot stay. There is no place the devil can push you away because that is your land. Even the people of Israel in the land of slavery, in, in the land of slavery in Egypt, listen to me, they prosper there. I prophesy, you will profit, prosper in that land you are in the name of Jesus. You will prosper in that country you are in the name of Jesus. I say you are blessed in that country you are in the name of Jesus. Whether it's your country or it's another mass country, you say you are in, in a foreign land overseas, as far as a community, people are living there and you are living there. By these brokers today, I ask that to prosper in that land. Prosper in that land in the name of Jesus Christ. If you want to test what I'm saying, I want you to take Offering in that place and send it to this platform. Let me tell you something. You know, God was telling the people of Israel, say, go to that land. And they wanted to go there as far as how the land was. And when they got there, they brought the fruit. I want you to bring a fruit in that land you are. Anywhere you are, I want you to bring a fruit. Look at the screen. You will see the bank detail there. I want you to send a fruit there. Let me tell you the fruit that you are sending to this platform right now has a long way to go in this prayer we are going to pray today. It has a long way to go in your sources in your life. Turn with me to the book of Luke chapter 16, verse 22. I'm going to show you again today 
that there is no place you cannot stay. The name has nothing to do with what God wants to do for you. Last time we were talking about a place. We are talking about palace. We are talking about this. Today I want to use another name of a place. Biblical base. Luke chapter 16 verse 22. Here we, you, we read. And it came to pass. That the beggar died. And was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Uh -huh. When I tell you now that you have a bosom in your life, you will not agree with me. When I tell you now that you are going to live in your own bosom, you will not agree with me. You say it is impossible. It's a lie. You can't walk in faith, pleasing God. And you have a place that is impossible for you to live. Especially the place God has given to you to live. I want to use this service today to let you know you have a bosom to live in your life. You have read here, I have seen here, how a man called Lazarus died and he was taken to Abraham's bosom. That is Abraham's bosom. Hallelujah. I don't, I want, to, I don't want us to believe that uh, Abraham took, took uh, a man like uh, Lazarus and put his, his own. He created his own, uh, uh, Lazarus' bosom. Abraham, they were not sleeping in the same bed. Yes. They were not living in the same room. He has his own bosom. Abraham has his own bosom. And here I'm telling you that Lazarus has his own bosom to live. Hallelujah. That's why in this service today, just open your mouth. Just open your mouth and say, God, I thank you for your bosom. In my life. Thank you most righteous God. For your bosom in my life. You have a bosom for me to live. In my life. Father I receive your bosom. In my life. Thank you Lord for your bosom. In my life. In the name of Jesus. I give you praise. I give you glory. In Jesus name. Amen. If you pray that prayer. Prepare as we go deeper into this prayer point. To know what it means to have a bosom. To know what is a bosom in your life. Let me tell you, we have seen here, God created a bosom for Abraham. And the Bible says, when Lazarus died, he was carried to Abraham's bosom. I was able to go further to tell you that Abraham and Lazarus, they were not sleeping in the same bed. Lazarus might have also had his own bosom, was having his own bosom. You have your own bosom. You have just prayed that God has given you your own bosom in your life. Hallelujah. Quickly, I want to dive into the supernatural. When we talk about a bosom, we know it's a place. A bosom is a place, but it is not a material place. It is not a material place. It might be built by brick, by zinc, by gold, by silver, but it's not seen able. Yes. Yes, it's not material place. It's not a material place. Yes, what, what I'm trying to say is that it's not that you are going to see a building like where I'm staying right now, going to see mansion this. Yeah, don't worry. I'm going to prepare you a place, a mansion. Don't worry, we are coming. That is the essence of this prophetic prayer meeting today so that when we are talking, we know what we are talking about. Number one. A bosom is not a material place. I want you to know that. And if you are able to know that, you will not be looking around. Well, where is this thing God says he's going to give me? Where is that? Oh, where is this? Is it the north? Is it in the south? Is it in the east? 
Is it in the West? Well, you are, everybody, we are looking at where is it? Where is it? No, 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 no. What God is saying here, a bosom that he has given creator for Abraham, for Lazarus here, is not a material place. That's what I want to say to you. So I want you to open your mouth. Just open your mouth and say, God, I thank you because you have a place that is not material. A immaterial place. Immaterial place. Yes, let's put it that way. Immaterial place. God, you have immaterial place from a place that is not material. In my life, hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, Kalabo Soko. Thank you, Lord, for you have a place, immaterial place for me to live. Lord, I receive your immaterial place in my life. Father, I dwell in a place that I'm not even seeing right now. But I live in a bosom. Yes, I live in a bosom. I live in my bosom. I don't need to see it with my two naked eyes. Father, let us know. That there are immaterial places that you have for us. A place that cannot be seen with our eyes. But we are there. Thank you, Lord, for your immaterial place. In my life, your immaterial places in our life, as a family, as an individual, as a church, as a ministry, as a fellowship, we thank you, Father, for all the immaterial places you have for us. We don't need to see them with our eyes before we know the rare places you have given to us. Yes, I always want you to be thanking God for these immaterial places that God has given to you in your life. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Let me put it this way so that you can get what I'm saying. I'm saying a bosom is a spiritual place. It's what? A spiritual place. Don't need to oh, sit down in a chair now. I'm sitting down in a chair God has given to me. Not necessarily this one I'm sitting on. No, Marabo Soko Po Shantala Bayaga. I want you to know that if you have faith pleasing God, there is no place impossible for you to stay. There is no place that is impossible for you to live in in your life. So I want you to open your mouth. Please follow me as I follow Christ. Open your mouth and thank God for the spiritual places in your, in your life. Thank God for the spiritual places in your life. Give me praise. Thank you, Lord, for your spiritual places. All the spiritual places I have in my life in the mighty name of Jesus. You see, let me tell you something. It will take you a spiritual eyes to see the spiritual places God has given to you in your life. It will take you a spiritual eyes to see spiritual places. This is a prophetic prayer meeting. This is nothing but a prophetic prayer meeting. I'm telling you in this service today that you are in a place, even right now as I speak, spiritually. You are in a spiritual realm. Yes, as you are listening to me right now, as we are here in this service together, I want you to know that you are living in a spiritual realm that can only be seen 
by your spiritual eyes. So I want you to open your mouth and start thanking God for the spiritual eyes he has given to you in your life. Don't tell me anything. We got it supposed to be. He has given. Don't think that this physical eyeball God has given to you alone. No, no. You will hear later as we are going in. But first of all, I want you to thank God. Say, God, I thank you for the spiritual eyes you have given to me in my life. Thank you, Father, for the spiritual eyes you have given to me in my life. Thank you, Father. I have a spiritual eyes. Thank you, Father. I have a spiritual eyes. Thank you, Father, for I have a spiritual eyes. Thank you, Lord, for the spiritual eyes you have given to me in my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, John was in the spirit to see the things in the spirit. If you read the book of Revelation, chapter 4, 1 to 11. Revelation chapter 4, 1 to 11. All the things John said he saw in the heavens. He first of all said that he was in the spirit. He was in the spirit. I want you to open your mouth and say, God, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for giving me the enablement to be in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, I'm in the spirit. I'm in the spirit. Father, Lord, I give you praise and glory for giving me the enablement to be in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, for giving me the enablement to be in the spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, John was in the spirit to see the things in the heavens. To see the things in the spirit. Oh Lord, I give you praise, I give you glory. For I can see in the spirit. Thank you, Father. I can see in the spirit. Thank you, Father, for the grace to see in the spirit. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing to see in the spirit. I want you to open your eye, open your mind, open your mouth, and thank God for you can see in the spirit. He has made you to see in the spirit. He wants you to see in the spirit. Father, Lord, I give you praise. I give you glory to see in the spirit. To see in the spirit. In Jesus' name. If you have prayed that prayer, I want you to know you are seen in the spirit. Even right now, you are seen in the spirit. God has given you a spiritual eye to see in the spirit. God has not given you the physical eye to see the physical world alone. No, in my place, they call such people away. He doesn't know what is happening around. He, he does not see beyond the, his nose or her nose. Away, people don't, they don't see beyond their nose. They only see the physical things. God has not created us. God, the kingdom God has brought us into. He has given us the grace to see naturally and spiritually. So, John was in the spirit. I want you to thank God that you are also in the spirit. I'm in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. I'm in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, I'm in the spirit. In Jesus' name. If you go further, one is in the spirit. You see, there are many ways you can be in the spirit. I want you to know, when you are sleeping, you are in the spirit. That is why you see, you call it dream, you call it trance, you call it vision. You just tell that you are seeing things beyond the, the natural. You are in the spirit. You are in the spirit. Let me tell you. Some people say, 
It's not possible, it's not possible. But they believe which is a wizard can be in the spirit. They can do all things in the spirit. But you, a child of God, you cannot see beyond your nose. And you say you are a child of God. And you say God, the Father, the omniscient is your God. Omnipresence is your God. It's in every place at any given time. And you say that is your God. You now carry the power, the, the, the grace God has given to you to see beyond this natural world and hand it over to demons, to witches and wizards, to native doctors, to demonic people. Let me tell you, that is a lie from the pit of hell. I'm telling you, pray it today. Pray it today. Thank God for those dreams, those visions you are seeing. It's a stage of spiritual life. You can't, you can't just belly food and say this and that. Anyway, that is another thing. You, when you see beyond the natural, you are in the spirit. It takes a man to be in the spirit to see beyond the natural, to see beyond this world, this physical world we are in. Go and read the Bible, Genesis to Revelation. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, having said that, I want us to pray. You know what I want you to pray? I want you to thank God for God's own dreams, God giving dreams, revelations visions in your life go package you in the spirit you know atmosphere for those things to come to you to reveal those things to you hallelujah father lord i thank you for your dreams in my life for your visions in my life for your revelations in my life open your mouth and thank god for that Thank you, Lord, for your dreams. Thank you, Lord, for your revelations. Thank you, Lord, for your visions in my life. Thank you, Lord, for your vision, revelation, dreams, Trans in my life. Thank you, Lord, for giving me that enablement, the platform to see beyond my nose, beyond this natural world. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And amen. You see, in the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 12, 1 to 4, 2 Corinthians. Chapter 12, 1 to 4. A man was in heaven. But he came back to tell us that he didn't know whether he went there with his body or out of his body. You see that? He said he didn't know whether it was in the body or out of the body. What can we see there? You see that? He didn't know whether he went there with his body of the body. He was just there in that atmosphere. He didn't know whether he was wearing clothes or was not wearing clothes, whether he was naked or he was clothed. He can't tell that spirituality. That is spiritual state in man's life. So if you can read it, Second Corinthians chapter 12, 1 to 4. But I want you to pray. I don't know. And I don't care to know. When this man was being taken to heaven, they say, say this is the body. Uh, that is the body. This is the body. Or out of body. He said he was there. What do you do now? I want you to thank God for the body. God has given to you in your life. I thank God for the body, the kind of body he has given to you in your life. Let me tell you, God has given you a physical body. God has given you spiritual body, celestial body. 
an immortal body. Father, Lord, I thank you for the body you have given to me in my life. Open your mouth and thank God. When you thank God for the body, the kind of body he has given to you, the devil cannot penetrate it. Yarabo soko po shandalabo roboko sentalabo keleba shandalaba. Thank you, Father, for the kind of body that you have given to me as a man. Thank you, Lord, for the body you have given to me as a spiritual man. Thank you, Father, for the body that you have given to me that sickness and pain cannot destroy. He kalabo soko po se hilaba yagaba sontolobo hikabala kose ke pa shandalabo rokote. Thank God for the body that he has given to you. Thank God for the body he has given to you. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Say, God, I thank you for the body that you have given. Yes, to me. I thank you, Father, for the body you have given to me. Thank God for the body he has given to you. Thank God for the body he has given to you in your life. Thank God for the body he has given to you. In your life, Balabo Kuli Baba Laba Shandayaga Legedege Balako Sintala Boroboko I Balako Seke Pasanta Laborobo Leke Pasita Laborobobo I Kalabo in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now when you come to Luke chapter sixteen, verse twenty two, the body that can be in the state of where we have been talking about bosom, like Abraham's bosom, like your bosom, like Lazarus' bosom, that the bosom God has prepared for you to enter into God's own bosom, you need a spiritual body. You need a spiritual body. Let me tell you, with God things are possible. Yes. God can even make you to go with your physical body. Jesus Christ is in heaven today. Physical body. Thank God for the spiritual body he has given to you. Spiritual body God has given to you. That's why many times you feel some certain things in your body. The spirit is talking to you. The spirit of God that is motivating, activating your body is reacting to certain things in the environment. You feel good people. Yes, it shows that your body is you no know, connecting. Yes, reconnecting. Yes, it's activating spiritually. That's why you feel all those sensations in your body. Spiritual body. Father, Lord, I thank you for your spiritual body. You have given to me in my life. Thank you, Lord, for your spiritual body that you have given to me. Your spiritual body that you have given to me in my life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your spiritual body. In my life, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. So it takes a spiritual body to be in one's own bosom. Yes. For example, let me tell you. In Luke chapter 16, verse 22, if you read it in new, new translation, no, oh, okay, new living translation, that's a Bible like that. If you read it there, new living translation, Luke chapter 20, 16, verse 22, it says like this, it says, Finally, the poor man died and was carried by the angels to sit beside Abraham at the heavenly banquet. So you want to tell me that when Lazarus, there are all those sores, cut, cut bodies, pains in the body, he used it to go and sit down near uh, who? Abraham with dirty clothes, rags, Sores everywhere, blood gushing out, water gushing out of the body. To, no, no, no way. Lazarus is here, not with wounds. Lazarus is in, in the bosom, 
not with wounds. Talaboso koposo talaboro bobo bole baba la bala boro bobo. You see, I, I want you to thank God. By the strife of Jesus, we are healed. No more wounds in your life. You are not carrying wounds to heaven. So start enjoying a perfect body. In your life today, I want you to thank God. You will not be in heaven with wounds. You will not be in heaven with wounds. Wounds have no more power in your life. Wounds are no more in your body. Father, Lord, I give you praise. I give you glory. For there are no more wounds in my life. No more wounds in my body. No more wounds in my spirit. No more wounds in my soul, in my heart, over my body. In the name of Jesus, no more wounds in my life. Barakut Santalabo. No more wounds in my life in the name of Jesus. No more wounds in my life. No more wounds over my body. In the name of, open your mouth and say, God, I thank you. No more wounds in my life. No more wounds in, over my body. No more wounds on my body. In the name of Jesus, I have no more wounds in my life. In the name of Jesus, I have no more wounds in my life. I want you to thank God that I have no more wounds in your life. Remember, I'm telling you this fact. You don't need to see something before you believe it. You don't need to see something before you believe it. No, 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 no. No, you are not Thomas. No more wounds in my life. I see my body the way God sees my body. Yes, in the name of Jesus, that is it. I have no wounds in my body, and that is it. If anybody is seeing wounds in my body, he is not spiritual. His eyes are not sanctified. If anybody is seeing sickness or pain or disease in your body, those eyes are not sanctified. But you who has uh, that sanctified eyes, spiritual eyes, Uraba Sha Kelekete Ila Gabala Bala Bala in the name of Jesus. No more wounds over your body in the name of Jesus. No more wounds over your body. No more wounds over your body. You are completely healed. In your spirit, no more wounds. In your soul, no more wounds. Over your bodies, no more wounds. Completely healed. You have been made whole by the blood of Jesus. Father, Lord, I thank you. There are no more wounds in, over my body. There are no more wounds in my life. There are no more wounds over my body. There are no more wounds in my life. There are no more wounds in my life. In Jesus' name. Let me tell you, Lazarus is not in heaven with wounds. Hallelujah. You see, when the Bible is talking, let us read Psalm 24, 3 to 4. Psalm 24, 3 to 4. If you read that place, let me read. It says, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. Who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully? You see, let me tell you. you. You can't go to heaven with dirty hands. You can't go to heaven with mutilated body. You can't go to heaven with sickly body. You can't go to heaven with battered body. Body full of sores? No, no. You are completely here to be in heaven. Hallelujah. No matter the affliction Lazarus faced, he did not carry it to heaven. I want you to thank God for his clean hands, 
is pure heart in your life. Hallelujah. Let me tell you today, the hands that you have is of God. The heart that you have is of God. Therefore, I want you to thank God and bless God for his hands in your life, for his heart in your life. Your hands are God's own today. Your hearts are God's own today. Give God the glory. Thank God for his hands upon your life. Thank God for he has sanctified your heart, giving you a clean heart, a clean hands in your life. That is why today you can dwell in God's giving places in your life. That is why you can dwell in God's own places in your life because it takes a clean hands. It takes a pure heart to be in God's own place. Lazarus was in Abraham's bosom. Clean hands, clean heart. Let me tell you, that house you are living, God wants you to live there with a clean hand, a pure heart. That office that you are living, God wants you to live there with a clean hand, with a pure heart in your life. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God, thank God in your life. Yes, I thank God for his own clean hands and pure hearts in my life, in the name of Jesus. And the Bible went further to say, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity? Hey, to be in God's own place is to see you, one, I, all, Lopos, are not lifted up our soul for vanity. We have not lifted up our soul for vanity. I want you to thank God. I want you to bless God and say, God, I thank you for you will not allow me to lift up my soul for vanity. I will not lift up my soul for vanity. He sokote. Father Lord, I give you. Open your mouth and pray and say, God, I thank you. Give me thanks, for he will not allow you to lift up your soul. Just for vanity. For vanity. He will not allow me to lift up my soul unto vanity. In my life, Father Lord, I give you praise, I give you glory, for you will not allow me to lift up my soul unto vanity in my life. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and thank God, for he will not allow you to lift up your soul unto vanity. You will not lift up your soul unto vanity. In the name of Jesus, Father. I give you praise, I give you glory, Mama Sekepa, Loso Kopo Talaba. I will not lift up my soul for vanity. Thank you, Father, for you will not allow me to lift up my soul unto vanity. You will not allow me to lift up my soul unto vanity. In the name of Jesus, I will not lift up my soul unto vanity. Father Lord, I give you praise and give you glory. I thank you, for you will not allow me to lift up my soul unto vanity. In my life, in the name of Jesus, Palabu Shuku Pusu Kupu Shanda Yagaba, Liti Tita Father Dida Palabu Rubu Duliba Palabo. Lay, he said, People who have not lifted up their souls unto vanity. Look at them. Yes, these are the people who have not used the name of the Lord. They have not used God's name to hide their lies. People use God's names to hide their lies. You see, because God has made it possible by faith, God is so pleased with you that he will not allow you to use 
is named to hide lies. You will not hide lies. In your life, you will not hide lies. In your life, you will not use the name of the Lord to tell lies. In your life, open your mouth and say, God, I thank you because you will not allow me to use your name to hide lies. You will not allow me to use your name to hide lies. I will not hide lies. Thank you, Father. I will not hide lies in my life. Thank you, Father, for you will not allow me to hide lies in my life. Open your mouth in the name of Jesus and pray that prayer and pray that prayer and say, God, I give you praise. I give you glory for you will not allow me to hide lies. For you will not allow me to hide lies in my life in the name of Jesus. You will not allow me to hide lies in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will not hide lies in your life. In the name of Jesus. You see, people who don't lift up their souls unto vanity, people who don't use God's name to hide their lies, the Bible says, no sworn deceitfully. They don't swear deceitfully. They don't swear deceitfully. They don't swear deceitfully. Open your mouth and say, God, I thank you for you will not allow me to swear deceitfully in my life in the name of Jesus. You will not allow me to swear deceitfully in my life in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, most righteous God. You are the God that answers prayer. Open your mouth and say, God, I thank you for answering these prayers. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. Thank you, Lord, for your bosom in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for your bosoms in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the grace to meet the condition to have, to live in your own bosom in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. You are in this service today. You have not known Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. This prayer point will not work for you. I want you to raise up your hand right now as I pray with you. Let us pray together. Say with me, my Father, I give you praise. Today, I realize I need Jesus. Today, Father, I receive Jesus as Lord and Savior in my life. Thank you, Father. For forgiving me. I confess that I'm a sinner and I thank you for you have forgiven me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have prayed that prayer, I pray for you right now. I, I, I am joining you to rejoice with you before God. Father Lord, I give you praise and glory for you have saved your children today. Thank you Lord because you have written down their names in the book of life. Heaven is now their final destination in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You say you are sick in your body. You are sick in your body. You are sick. You are here right now. God has brought you here to be healed. God has brought you here to be saved. God has brought you here to be healed. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, you are healed in Jesus' name. You are healed in Jesus' name. You are healed in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You say, Pastor, I miss my relationship. Whether with God, with your spouse, with your friends, with your colleagues, God wants you to live a peaceful life here on earth. Today I pray for you. Receive your reconciliation. Receive your, your restoration in the name of Jesus be restored be restored with God be restored with man be restored with your spouse be restored with your friends be restored with your colleagues in Jesus name amen and amen God bless you my name is Reverend Dr. Monde Ehidiame Abluola by the grace of God, the senior pastor of World of Faith Bible Church International Incorporated.
in Abuja, Nigeria, showcasing the words of faith to mankind. God bless you. I rejoice with you being here together with us today. I bless you. I bless your beloved one. I mean members of your family in the name of Jesus Christ. 2023, my year of greater height. 2023, my year of greater height. 2023, my year of greater height. Hallelujah. It is my year of greater height. It is your year of greater height. The grace, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shalom.